Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with Chapter 3, or the final chapter, of this Tamiya radio-controlled 116 scale mid-production German Tiger 1. If you're stumbling across this video for the first time, this video here is part of a three video series of this entire project. The first build goes over the project start and the condition that the model was in when it was delivered to the shop. The second video goes over in minute detail exactly what modifications and alterations were made to the model in order to bring it up to the specs that you see it here. And this video here is going to go over the radio control functions and take the model for one final test drive before I go ahead and box it up and ship it to the customer. If you are stumbling across this video for the first time, I do recommend to pause this video and watch the other two videos that I just mentioned just to keep yourself updated on the progress bringing the model up to the way that you see it here. Under the hood, the model is stock Tamiya. This includes both the mechanical functions, the electronic functions, and all of the other animations and features that are supplied with the stock Tamiya kit. One change that was made, however, was with the radio system. When the model was first built, the previous builder fitted a older style radio with the external aerial, while that system was replaced for a more current 2.4 gigahertz radio system. The exact radio in question is this unit that I have here, which is the Futaba T6L Sport radio. This radio here is not 100% stock, however. This radio was modified by another individual specifically for use on the Tamiya full option 116 scale kits. The radio was pre-configured and was supplied with this model from the customer. What the individual did was he actually did a really nice function in replacing this switch here with a three-way switch, which is definitely going to come in handy once I get the model fired up and you get to see the vehicle's functions in operation. Before I go ahead and take the tank on a test drive, let me go ahead and first turn the model on in order to go over some of the radio functions as well as how to recharge the vehicle. First and foremost, the let me turn on the radio. It's always a customary thing that I like to do on these RC tanks. With the radio on, I'm now going to turn the model on and that's done with the power switch which I like I said in the other videos is located under this hatch here which is held on with magnets. Here goes the main power switch. Note the red painting on it for high visibility. Once the power's on, it's going to make that high-pitched squeal, and it's going to automatically fire up the sound system. In order to recharge the tank, the recharge jacks are located underneath the engine hatch. This was one function and feature that's nice about the Tamiya kits because of the engine hatch being fully functional. What's kind of strange on the stock Tamiya kit is that with the early kit being an early production Tiger with a FIFO system, the engine hatch is really no longer functional. But because this vehicle here is a mid-production, sans the, the FIFO system, this now makes access to this section here all that much more easier. And it's one of those features that I really only found on the Tamiya. The other 116 scale tanks on the market just don't have this option. But in order to get access to the battery cables, the turret has to be rotated in a certain way, and that's because of the spare track links that we have here on the turret. This is one feature found on these patterned Tigers. In fact, this is why on the real German Tiger 1, we have more spare track links on this section here compared to this side because in order to get access to the engine, the turret needs to be rotated in a certain way. Once the turret is rotated, you get to that little sweet spot right over there, and this will then allow you to get access to the engine, or I should say the recharge jack. Kind of kind of used to saying that from all the ones of scale tanks that I do, but the hatch opens up and here we have the battery compartment. Now I'm going to temporarily turn off the sound system and the tank just so I could show this in more depth. With the tank off, you get to see the compartment now in more detail. Now this switch that we have here is your light switch. Like I said in the other video, the bow headlight is fully functional but is an independent circuit compared to the other mechanical and electrical functions. This is powered by the simple toggle switch that we have here. Note I painted a little red dot knowing or indicating the position where the headlight would be powered on. If I pan the camera to the front, you can see the headlight is now in the on position. Back to the rear, I'm going to turn this off just for now. In here we have 
a battery box stuffed in. Now, these two AA batteries are not for the main power. These AA batteries here are just for the headlight function. It's held on with this little 9 volt plug and a dual AA, AA battery pack, so it's pretty easy to get to and change by the end user. Deep inside the well here, however, is the main recharge jack. If I go in here and yank out the cable, you'll see what the system looks like when exposed. And here's the recharge system now yanked out. Now this is a modification that I always do on these 116 scale tanks, as it does make getting access to the batteries a lot simpler and you don't have to disassemble the model and potentially cause any damage to the details or the paint finish in order to just keep the vehicle in operating condition. By going with the recharge jack, you just get access to a certain point, charge the model as long as you need to, and then when you're done, just stuff the wires back in and you're ready to run. The recharge jack is a system found on the EastCoastArmory.com product line, and it's a drop-in installation. No soldering or wire splicing is required. This basically leads us now to another feature that was done to this model that differentiates it from the other 116 scale Tiger One build that I've done, as well as the other 116 Tiger Ones that you see on YouTube as well as on the internet. When the to me kit was de originally developed, it was to utilize two 7.2 batteries. This model here, during the rebuild process, one of those batteries was removed and it now runs on a single 5000 milliamp 7.2. This was actually done by another individual who is a pretty good resource on these Tamiya radio controlled tank functions. When I asked why this was the case or if this was going to cause any problems, the fellow basically told me that, well, the reason why the original kit utilized two 7.2s was at the time these kits were developed, keep in mind this was the late 1990s time frame, the batteries that were on the market did not have the milliamps that we commonly find on batteries of today. So in order to power the vehicle and its electronic functions, a second 7.2 battery was needed and utilized. If you're going to run with a single 7.2 system, make sure it's got a 5,000 milliamp battery, and therefore you have more than enough power to power the basic RC functions, as well as the electronic functions that are supplied with the option pack. It's because of the single 7.2 battery pack is why we only have a single 7.2 recharge jack. On the last Tamiya Tiger one that I did, that vehicle did utilize a dual battery system, and if we can recall to that video, I actually had two of these jacks stuffed into the same location that we have here. So this model here is a little bit more streamlined in that respect. And that's basically all there is to it for the changes that were made to the electronic system. Let me go ahead, stuff all these wires back in, and get this model powered up so we could go over the radio functions and get this tank for a test run. Firing the model back up, turn on the radio, hit the switch. Once the sound system is at its idle point, you're now ready to operate the model. First stick is this stick here. This is a single stick drive and controls all of the drive functions. It's got some pretty good throttle to it, so just a little bit will do you. Now I'm pretty sure when I'm driving this model, I'm bound to get a plethora of comments saying I'm driving too fast, but it's a test drive, guys, so you know, bear with me, okay? Now, this stick over here is purely for the turret and the other animation functions. Side to side rotates the turret. Up and down, elevate the gun. And that's specifically true if the stick here is in the center. If it's either towards the up or bottom, and you go up or down on the stick, this is going to change the function of the, of the switch here as opposed to just going up and down. So. The remainder of the functions consists of the main gun recoil and flash, as well as the bow MG34 firing. The stock to me a kit would utilize this stick over here in order to do that function, but it would be controlled by this slider. 
Well, one of the changes that the fellow who configured this radio made was with that addition of that three-way switch that I mentioned before. This is a really nice feature and really does simplify the operation of one of these models. If I push up on this little toggle here, it's gonna fire the BOW MG34. And if I push towards me, it's gonna fire the main gun. I also want to point out that with the lighting that I have going on right now, it may be difficult to see the actual photostrobe flash on the inside here of the muzzle brake, but it is a stock unit and the flash is fully functional. If I move the camera closer to the barrel, you'll probably be able to see it easier.
Well, needless to say, I think we could classify that as a successful test run. The model performed absolutely swimmingly on both on and off-road conditions. There was plenty of power to go around. I didn't really run into any slippages with the track tension. Not only did the model perform well off-road, but it performed really well in the off-road conditions or the various off-road conditions that I have here on the property. Basically, what you see here is dirt and, and rocks. It did well in leafy, twiggy type conditions and all the other variants of grass <laughs> that I have here from standard grass, crab grass, as well as even a few, I believe it's called still grass or chicken weed. Regardless, the model was able to power through without any problems. Throughout the majority of the running, I was actually driving on half stick and the model did have plenty of power left in reserve in case I needed to overcome an obstacle of one sort or another. I, at times I did go ahead and give the model full throttle just to see what it can do and it did not disappoint. I believe some of the credit for the tank being able to run pretty well on the off-road scenes that I just mentioned had to partially do with the vehicle's track modification. Like I said in the other two videos, the tracks that you see on this model here are not the stock Tamiya units. Those were replaced with a set of metal aftermarket tracks from Tegan. Tegan tracks because they are made from metal, do give the model a lot more weight compared to this, the original individual workable link nylon tracks that were found on these kits. And if anyone was wondering if there was going to be a compatibility issue between the Tegan track and the Tamiya running gear, and more importantly the sprocket, well, after seeing this video, I'm pretty sure we could put that concern to bed because the tank performed absolutely flawlessly in that regard. Sadly, the only regrettable thing that I can think of is that this video and story is coming to an end. From here, the model is going to be packaged up and shipped to its rifle owner. And as for me, well, I guess it's off to the next one. But at least I was able to have my fun with it. Taking these models out for test drives and runs is definitely one of the highlights of this job. And it's also really enjoyable to share it with the rest of you on YouTube. And with that, that wraps up this model showcase video for this 116 scale radio-controlled mid-production German Tiger 1. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content, being model showcase video series like this guy over here, to the other smaller and larger scale model showcase and project update videos that frequently get posted to this channel. Another way to keep in the loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There, I have more photographs of this particular build as well as the other smaller and larger scale builds that are showcased on the channel. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Till next time, take care.